So next thing we're going to learn about are structs. And a struct is a composite data type, aka also known as an aggregate data type. It means we can bring together many different types of data and store them into one variable. And so uh, I think the best place to start with that is just var x struct, right? And sorry, not var x, not variable. We're going to do something different here. And, uh, and we're going to create a type. And so you can do type, and this type might be person. Are you paying attention, Matt? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and we'll do P just in case we want to, capital P, if we wanted to export it, maybe that would be important. But person, and it's a struct. And now we're going to say what fields are in that struct. And so one field might be uh, first name. And again, maybe we do this all capital because we want to export it at some point. And that would be a string. And then last name would be a string. And so now we have a person struct. Sweet. And that is a type. And so we could go to the language spec and we could go to effective go and we could we could look, you know, what exactly is a type? Golang spec. And is that a key word, right? Like is it a reserved word? What? And if I look for type, we have all this stuff, and I'm gonna just scroll down and maybe under lexical elements I'll hit something. And identifiers, types. And so there we had var was a key word, which is how we were doing variables one way, and var for getting the zero value, var x int would give us a variable x set to the zero value of zero. And type is also a key word. And so we're creating a type. So just like from a programming standpoint, let that detonate in your head for a second, right? There are types built into languages. Like we have the numeric type, the string type, the bool, slice, you know, map. We've learned about those. We just created another type called person. This isn't an object. It's a type. Go, you hear sometimes people say, oh, it's all about types. Go language is all about types. It is. And it's a new take on object-oriented programming. I think I showed this yesterday, but if you go to the golang.org website, and go to documents and then go to the FAQ and then search for object oriented is go an object oriented language you can pause the video right here if you're watching a video and you can read about that right it kind of talks about their approach to doing object oriented and inheritance and whatever all that so in go you just create a type and now I'm going to create a variable of that type p1 colon e well, let's see. Let's do it this way. Var p1 person. Var p1 is a person. That's its type. And p1 is equal to Let's do it like that. Format, expected operator, found this, and one or more errors. P1 is equal to, so do I need to do this? That doesn't seem right to me, but undefined person. P1 is a person. Format, run, there we go, Todd McLeod. So I have to do the type. And so this would be a composite literal, P1, composite literal like that. Might as well do it like this. I was just wanting to show var P1 person, but run. Todd McLeod. So using a composite literal, let's stick with those. They're the easiest. All right, P1 is a person, and then I populate the fields. I could have, and if we look at the type of that, The type is from package main, it's type person. I'm in package main, from package main, it's type person. Right, that's the type of P1. Interesting. Leave that commented out. Uh, I, I'll, I'll uh, do it this way. 
scan one way, another way. So here's another way. I could also do it like this. Format. That also works. That's another way. Another way. I could also do it like this. Let's see, another way. So you could open all these. All right, and you could compare them. That's one way. That's that's one way. That's another way. That's another way. Pretty cool. Well, identify, yeah. Can you identify in the the, the actual uh, declaration of the, the the person obstruct the what the variable or what the key is going to be identify as a string and its variable. Without having to actually set up, uh, I mean, can the type be created um, intrinsically like that? Um, intrinsically is the correct word. Um, like if you just set after f name space string, would it accept that? I'm trying to cut out this you know, a step. That um, if, you, if you took string, which line? Uh, twelve. So after f name, if you just add string there. Yeah, I could have also done it like this. And it knows because F name, last name in that order, and I gave it in that order, it knows where to assign them. When you do it like this without providing the key for the field, without providing the key for the field, you have to provide them in order. But these could have been out of order. I could have had this up top. And it still is fine because it knows what the key is for the field. But if I don't provide the key for the field, then I have to provide them in order. And if I provide them on one line, I don't need the trailing comma. I wonder if that blows it up. You could have the trailing. Oh, it takes it out. My printer will always print the uh, values in the, right, in the same order? Yeah, I think it just does them straight down, yeah. Wasn't there something where it mixes it up? Maps. Maps Map. mixes it up Map by purpose. Up. You can't count. You can't count on the order of a map. Why is it on purpose? Um, that has something to do with the data structure in the back end, yeah. and just how it's optimized. And that's true for maps everywhere. Oh. All right. So that's uh, that's how we do it. How would we add more stuff into our map? Maybe that should be the next video. Um, you guys want to practice making or not map, but our struct. You guys want to practice making a struct? Yeah. All right. And, so, uh, can we make uh, the value type to be uh, a map or something else besides the string bits? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, so let's do that and then we'll attach a method and then I'll give you an assignment, okay? So what if we also wanted to include my favorite nums, fave nums? And this one's not gonna be visible. And it's gonna be a slice of int. And what if I want to include friend? Nums. Friend phone. All right? So I'm just going to call it F phone for my friend's phone numbers. And that's going to be a map with a string and an int. Cool? And so now for those fields, uh, my favorite nums, colon, I need a composite literal or a slice literal, composite literal for a slice. Okay, and I always have to have that comma. And then for my friend's phone numbers, I need a composite literal, and it's gonna be a string, which will be that, and an int, and then this. And so I'm gonna have Bob, I don't know, 42, and Matt, 
37. Don't need the trailing one. Do need the trailing one. And now when I print this out, so I have a data structure where I'm able to put all kinds of different pieces of data in. String, if I wanted my age, int, and then right here I just do age 45. Cool. Now, watch this. Type secret agent struct is first a person, and then they have license to kill, bool. Right? So P2, let me just copy this. P2 is we could have a promotion. And this, is, this person is going to be a secret agent. And so they will be, first and foremost, a person. And a person is secret agent has a person in it and so that field will do we'll do uh we'll just do yeah we'll do person and that we'll do them in order on this one just thinking this through and uh that's going to be a person with these fields and since the fields are in order i could just do it like this i kind of want to keep it consistent so let me think about how i do this hold on and keep it uh, clear. So I'm going to change this one because I no longer need the key. I don't need the keys because they're in order. So I'm just going to do all these like this. Okay, you guys get it? They're all presented in the same order, so I don't need the keys. This is just going to be the most readable. And then the next one, same thing. They're all presented in the same order. And then this one is uh, this one is true format and print p two. I guess we don't need that. Run Todd McLeod forty five all that and true license to kill is true. So you can take one type and you can bet it in another type. You can take one type and you can bet it into another type. And this is called uh, intertype promotion. So all of the fields here. It has some weird name. I know JavaScript is the prototype Yeah, I know. I don't like that in JavaScript. But here it's all the fields inside person get promoted to this, this struct. Now what would happen if this was the case? What if secret agent has a field F name and person has a field F name? And we wanted to print format.println p2.f name. Uh, and we assigned here, F name is right before person to kill, and we say, signed, it's James Bond. Right? Is it going to print James Bond there, or is it going to print Todd? James Bond. And I think just keep this consistent. I'll do uh, and then put this like that. So is it going to print uh, James or Todd for write that? James. Format. 
James. Or watch this. Got it? It's very logical, right? When you see it, you're like, that's pretty cool. And so you can quickly start to, you know, see how, oh, I make a generic type for vehicle, and then for, for truck, I, I say it's a vehicle plus these extra fields. And for sedan, I say it's a vehicle, for type sedan, I say it's a vehicle plus these extra fields. So you can see, like, oh, that's cool. Oh, this is an object. No, it's a type. Don't use object. That comes with baggage from other languages. A little bit different, right? Types get promoted. We don't say public, private. We say visible, not visible, exported, not exported. Can you print the, the age? Since you're not overwriting inside the secret, secret agent, I want, to, I want to make sure in my head if it's going to print out uh, 45. Yeah, so that's the promotion, right? So if I do the age. So without, without identifying dot person, if you just said age. That's yeah, it, that's, that's the promotion. So it just gets promoted to the next one up. Unless there's a conflict, then you got to drill down if you want the inner types field, not the outer one. So, well, let's say this. Let's now do funk. Uh, I don't know. Um, phrase. And funk, and we're going to do a receiver. So first we'll do a funk phrase. And, and we'll do, and it'll return a string, and, uh, and it won't take anything in, and it's just going to return, you know, like, haha. Will you come build a new program for the space mission? Um, sure. <laughs> Actually, no. People's lives are on the line. Probably not. So that's kind of like, uh, right, one thing. And then I could attach that. And how do I do a receiver? I think it's P person. So, uh, and this could be anything. Let's just make it. Whatever, right? It could be anything. And so that's just kind of like another field. Yeah, anyway, I'm not sure if I got this right, because I haven't done this just manually in a long time. So wit person phrase, and now I have my person phrase, and that secret agent, I'll try P1 right here. I'll just keep it, oh, I should get this before I add that. So let me take that out for one moment and share this. And do enter. Type promotion and now attach method and now let me get back to that point cool and now let's just try this and see what happens font no I just need to do better yet it's not going to return anything we're just going to do when this runs Just print that. And now we will do uh, here p1 dot phrase. I need that? Maybe. Making it work. Trip out! What about this? p2 dot phrase. It's got a person in it, right? So maybe that method gets promoted. Cool. What about this? Do I need width there? I don't. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, next one. And so I'm attaching this to secret agent. Now they both have phrase. See what happens. So uh, this one didn't override. Oh, I need to do P2. No, that is P2. P P2 phrase phrase. Dun, dun, dun. The oh, there we go. Like Thank you. Different. I forgot to change that. I thought I did in my mind. My fingers just didn't follow. 
And this. What you think, right? So that's like, whoa! You guys just got slices, you got maps, you got structs, you got all these different data types can be thrown in a struct. Shoot, we could attach functions to a type. And that's like, what? screw it, I'm just going to use the old school language. That's like an object with a method. Right? Cool. That's like all you need. That's like 90% of what you need right there. This is built by geniuses as opposed to like chum schmuck, one dude in an office whose boss said, he built a language and he did it in 12 days and that became JavaScript, the world's most popular programming language. It, it wasn't built by some guy named Guido who then named it after an uh, English comedy troupe, right? And, you know, isn't one of the world's like, you know, Reggie Jackson's, you know, Muhammad Ali's of programming, but just some Swedish guy named Guido, you know, is built by Ken Thompson, Robert Gressmer, uh, Rob Pike, the guys who created, helped create C Unix UTF-8 at the best software, the best software engineering fir firm in the world. So what's the advantage of using Go over JavaScript? First of all, JavaScript sucks, and it will confuse you to no end, and it's not statically typed, so it doesn't, I don't know. And I, I, I can say all that like I know what I'm talking about, and I don't, but that's what, that's what I understand. And it's like, yeah, I think I'll go with the guys who, like, you know, have those credentials as opposed to Guido or whatever that JavaScript dude name is who built it in 12 days, who are way more, both way more advanced than me, light years ahead of me, but I want, I want my submarine to be built by Jacques Cousteau, so to speak. <laughs>